Bill, great to have you here. Let's start with FedEx. What do you say? Yeah, you know, it's interesting that, picking that. We, we actually just sold FedEx at the beginning of this, of this month after owning it for quite some time. So, I mean, long term, I'd say a lot of the reasons why we liked it are still intact. And that's really, you know, underlying that there's really only a couple public traded companies in this space. Uh, you know, so they dominate or one of the people dominating it. Long term, the e-commerce volumes will be there. The problem is, Short term, they're lapping the volumes from COVID, so their volumes are down. Second part of it is really wage inflation, fuel costs, have all crimped their profitability. So that's where it gets a little bit hairier and why the stock, you know, though the bounce today has been down. You know, they announced a lot of cost cuts, which is, you know, the right direction to go. We just say wait because probably think there's more pressure on the company, uh, since we expect a recession next year, uh, there may be kind of an additional pressure point. But long term, we'd look for an opportunity to get back in there. All right, let's move on to uh, Nike, which is one of the stocks of the day, up more than 13 percent. Yeah, I mean, Nike, that is one of the great ones in terms of earnings. So uh, when you looked at it, sales up 27 percent year over year, stripping out currency, uh, which is, I think, the way to look at it, things that they can control. Uh, I think it just shows the strength of their brand uh, and why you should probably be interested in it. I think the other parts of it that get interesting is, you know, they're one of the things, and again, strength of brand, they have the ability to go around retailers, so they are seeing growing growth of direct-to-consumer sales, so they don't have the middleman in there. The last part, which is really a play on China, which is if China's really opening up, there's another opportunity for growth there. So I think that one, we don't own it here, but I, I think it fits in what we would like, which is, you know, great brands that can live through any sort of recession, and frankly, you know, you don't need to worry about uh, in terms of any sort of economic downturn. Not that the earnings won't get hit some or stock might go down, but they will, you know, highly likely they come back stronger than ever after. Final name then. Let's talk about Carnival. What do you say? That one's an interesting one. So, you know, the positive is Carnival is right now benefiting from, you know, the thirst for getting out and traveling and, and experiences rather than goods post-COVID. But that being said, the company was just, you know, close to crushed uh, by COVID. So yeah, they lost money in 2020, 2021, and losing or will lose money again in 2022. Um, looks like they should be able to turn it in 2023 in terms of at least some earnings. But the problem is margins will still be crimped by, you know, a lot of the additional costs to deal with, you know, protecting people from the health side of things. Also, they have still credits that people need to use from that they paid for already from COVID time. So uh, it, it's a road back. I'd say because it's, you know, financial health and, and balance sheet is, is pretty weak. I, I call it a speculation. It's not the kind of company we'd own here. Right. It may be worth a look at for speculators um, because, you know, again, it's been beaten down into the ground, but it's so leveraged that if you get another Unfortunately, I don't even want to talk about another kind of COVID yeah. shutdown kind of thing. It, it may not make it. Wow. Bill, thank you. We appreciate all your thoughts today on these three big thank earnings you. movers.